I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. If your relationship is in trouble, I'm the dude to call. Has your soulmate become your cellmate? Does black love still exist? What are your bedroom turnoffs? Fantasies and fetishes. Financial infidelity. I'm dating a fat person. Are they worth the wait? Trust me, this is gonna be crazy. How about the heavy stuff? The child wasn't his, and he still had to pay child support. It's a very heated topic. I was that right. Mama's baby, daddy's maybe. I just have so many questions I want to ask you. I don't like to kiss a woman's ass. Is there something wrong with that? Damn. <laughs> he told me he had a vasectomy. I'm pregnant. Betrayal has been committed. Hit you with a bad yeah. pipe routine. How does he maintain his humpacity? He likes it when it pinches my neck. Why can't you open up, brother? I'm a karate man. Karate man rules on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. Yeah. How do you write women so well? So William. Reason and accountability. The voice of reason. It's Monday. Welcome back to the Voice of Reason. Listen, a lot of these topics come from our listeners. Today's topic, man. There's a lot of people out there that's uh, sensitive about it. You feel me? There's a lot of people out there that are hella sensitive, you know, about their weight. We're going to do a show about this now listen it's not my job to judge i'm not out here trying to judge and be on people's head that way i i ain't trying to do that but i think we should have this discussion now before i get into the discussion this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna promote some stuff you know i always promote stuff i got it i always promote stuff and it's important somebody said weight is waste listen we're not gonna talk about that right now (laughs) the first thing i'm going to do is promote like i normally do i know you guys are listening so it's all good i'm going to promote i'm gonna promote total package energy totalpackageenergy.com Somebody says, swear ain't wet. Swear it ain't wet. Okay, let's just, (laughs) our people in here be wildin'. Listen, I'm going to promote Total Package Energy because that's what I'm supposed to do. Total Package Energy is my favorite energy shot. I can't call it an energy drink. It's not a monster or or anything like that. It's it's not that kind of get down. But. I think it's better than Monster, it's better than Red Bull, it's better than 5-Hour Energy, it's better than all of that stuff. TotalPackageEnergy.com. That is the place I want you guys to go. TotalPackageEnergy.com. It is the coldest shit ever. I'm getting ready to take, like, somebody said Mimi's looking gorgeous as ever. When is she not looking good? Thank you. I mean, this is Big Juicy and Little Juicy. They both little. I don't know why one got the designation as big and little. Maybe it's little with big things. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. (laughs) (laughs) No, they both pretty girls. Everybody know. You know, Angry Smurf is a pretty little girl. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, she is. Everybody know it. Ain't nobody hating. Mm, We know Miss Little Juicy. (laughs) <laughs> she called herself Lil Juicy. Right. Oh That's what I loved about it. I was like, you you call yourself Lil Juicy? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I love it. Mm. Call yourself Lil Juicy, Lil Juice. <laughs> 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 hey, so listen. I'm going to say this right now. Our live stream is off right now. But I'm recording the show. Mm-hmm. I, the Wi-Fi in here be tripping, but I'm recording the show, so don't even trip. You under dig? I'm recording it right now, so don't worry. Y'all might not be seeing it, but that's cool. Let me say, I'm still recording, so don't worry. <laughs> so don't worry. You guys will see this show as soon as it's over, because I'm going to give it to Frank. You know we're doing a special 5150 show tonight. Ah, shoot. The reason why we're doing a, a, a 5150 show tonight is because Corey 
is filming uh what is it black jesus again oh that's good so this is the third episode of black jesus all right somebody said it's cool all i need is the chat hilarious then chat on <laughs> my niggas <laughs> i'm wild it's what it is but i got a couple more things to promote and then i'm gonna jump into this topic Ooh, you already know i'm doing the black power awards november 18th i'm gonna be down there in atlanta november 17th through the 19th on the 18th i'm doing a special uh it's an after party but it's really a party that acknowledges the greatness of one of the greatest MCs alive to ever do it, Rakim Allah. We already know Rakim of Eric B and Rakim fame. To me, the greatest MC ever. Got to roll with him, got to rock with him on that. Greatest MC of all times. And I'm glad they chose me to honor the brother along with this beautiful sister. I think she's a spoken word artist and author. Her name is... Um, Sonny Patterson. She's dope as hell. Uh, we're going to honor the great Rakim Allah. Black Power Awards, second annual, a celebration of black excellence. The Black Power Awards will be hosted by the good brother David Banner. Right? Oh, man. And Ernestine Johnson. She's going to be fly. You know I'm going to go down there looking like... Oof. I'm going to go down there looking like a brand new pack of now laters on Halloween. Oh, shit. Have you, ever, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen a brand new pack of now and laters? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your favorite pack of now later? Apple or cherry. Apple. Or cherry or grape. grape. Apple, grape. Watermelon. It. Remember mm -hmm. bubblegum came out and just fucked everybody up? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, no. Shit. What about Mystery Mix, the first one? I like that. Shit. But I like the chewy now, ladies. Like a little hard, but a little chewy. I bet. Uh, <laughs> look at you out here chewing on now, ladies. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Ow! Hey, it's going down in the town. I love it. <laughs> Already promoted uh, Total Package Energy. That's some shit. We got to support Total Package Energy. One of the greatest products out there. I've drank two of these today. Because I this is my second show of three. I got three shows today. Six hours of radio. Wow. Come on, man. We out here trying to do this shit for real. What else do I have to promote? Oh, you guys, I think people in here are hitting the super chat. Are they not? They are. Mm -hmm. Somebody just dropped $50. Who is that who dropped $50 on the super chat? They want us to get our shit together. Sugar Crisp. Thank you, Sugar Crisp, for mm -hmm. that $50. Somebody else did it. I'm out here in Tapa, flooded with no power, but I listen to your show religiously, and I love this the content so much, I have to donate. God damn, Black 83. Wow. Black Q83, man. Take that $10 back. <laughs> <laughs> out right. here struggling man i appreciate that shit but god damn it bobby damn not like this thank you <laughs> wow. not like this he came in like this a real supporter damn mm -hmm. that's a and if he could do it man what can you do sitting over there with a bag of cheetos fingers orange than a motherfucker blunt the ashtray <laughs> he, you know if he could do it black q83 <laughs> damn thanks man i appreciate that thank you for supporting the show but like i said we are doing our part over here as well mimi just talked about her homeboy you know uh well she calls him her brother but he's organizing you know at this church mm -hmm. it's a famous church here in L la west angeles yep right and they are taking all goods, you feel me? All goods, whatever you got, clothes, diapers, a lot of diapers needed. Yes. Babies down there, a lot of diapers are needed. So please, please, please go down there, West Angeles. If you're in LA, go to West Angeles and support that movement. Now, now that I've completed that, here we go. 
Are y'all ready for tonight's topic? Yes, we are. I used a friend of mine as a case study. Let me just say, I'm going to show the girls. Is this woman beautiful or no? Oh, yeah. She's she bad. bad. She's beautiful. Beautiful I hair. I to tell y'all, there are some bad, big girls. Mm-hmm. But because of society's rules and standards, it's hard for motherfuckers to be out in the street with them. Right. Why is that the case? Today's topic, shallow hell. A deeper look at men who are BBW curious. They curious. They be like, oh, she bad. Mm-hmm. But she big, bad and big. Mm-hmm. How do I do bad and big at the same time? <laughs> you know, niggas is funny style. An expose of men that secretly admire and desire full-size women. Now, here's the crazy question to start this whole thing off. Why is an attraction to a BBW considered a fetish if 60% of all Americans are overweight? Doesn't that mean banging fat chicks is the norm rather than a strange kinky thing? Call us 323-230-4610. That's 323-230-4610. If you love big girls, Who's the baddest big girl out there? Mm. I'm going to go Jill Scott. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Jill done lost a lot of weight. But I like big Jill, too. Mm-hmm. Big Jill. I mean, Jill. Sexy. Something about Jill. God damn it. I'll name a bad big girl. Hmm. Um, Monique is bad to me. She's lost a lot of weight. Monique's a pretty girl, still, though. Yeah. You know, she's pretty. Yeah. She's pretty. She's a pretty girl. Yeah. I think Jill Scott. I already said that. Oh, you did? Sorry. You, you weren't listening? Yeah, because you're on your phone. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. I, I, I was responding to this dumb girl uh, on here trying to talk shit about me. So. Really? Uh, Let's just, yeah. Sorry. Stop responding to the chat. Could you stop? Okay, <laughs> come back to us, angry smirk. Hmm. This is why okay. she's angry. Just leave me alone. I'm nice until you bother me. They're never going to leave you alone. God. Okay, cool. <laughs> what about Takara? Yeah, they tried oh, to yeah. say Takara was big, but... Remember, she was on that Celebrity Fit Club or whatever oh, that shit yeah. was. Mm-hmm. And they was saying, oh, your BMI is this or that. But I was looking at Takara like, God she damn, is. that motherfucker's delicious. Oh, yeah. She's beautiful. Yeah, she's yeah. beautiful. What about the girl who was on the show with uh, Nikki when she was the mom and the daughter? And it, there was the, the she liked oh. the the man. She was always chasing Mr. Oh. Uh, uh, Ogilvy. What's his name? Mr. That's, 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 that's no, the daughter. About, What's the no, daughter? the daughter. Countess Vaughn. Okay. She, she's kind of a little thick, but she's cute. Yeah, well, and she's lost anymore. a lot of weight, too. Yeah, she's real cute. She's lost a lot of weight, though. Mm-hmm. But uh, a lot of men are ashamed. Are you ashamed to take your big, bad girl out and have a public display of affection, a PDA? <laughs> Hugged up all on her, kissing her neck. If you can get to it. Fuck it. Don't be afraid to love your big woman. <laughs> Why do big women have a season? Cuffing season. Oh, sure. You big as hell. I'm cuffing you. Shit. I'm going to wait for the skinny bad chick. Come, where'd she go? Oh, Uh, share problem. I'm going to wait for the skinny bad chick during summertime. You know how niggas do? Mm -hmm. Summertime, you leave the comfort of that warmth. Your big girl. You mm-hmm. cuffed her during the winter, mm-hmm. but you let her go during the summer. Mm-hmm. I want to hear from brothers who love big women, and I want to hear your reasons as to why. Are BBWs the sexiest women? We, we've we been told that skinny girls are the ones. Can skinny girls handle all this dack? Ooh. <laughs> Do big girls handle it best? I'm not going to, you over here responding. Look at you. Shh. <laughs> Get off your phone. I need to let her know. <laughs> Listen, she's a fan and everything, but like you shouldn't be negative to another woman. That's not cool. Oh, I Jesus. didn't do nothing to her. 
Shayla Sweets. We keep going. Ooh. Ooh. That's why she's She said named. two things about me. Uh, the first time I let it slide, the second time I'm like, okay, like, damn. Let's let me ask you this. If you met, right, a chubby girl with a great personality, spiritually evolved, intellectual, educated, right? Great career. And I mean, she big, but bad. <laughs> big, but bad. Bad. Like, fine. Listen, <sighs> did you see this picture? Did you see this picture? Look at this picture, man. Come he around. Can't see it from over there. Come around here. You a big ass nigga too now. Oh. But the, listen, the stigma <laughs> is different though. You know what? You can't say that. This like Gerald Levert looking ass nigga got bitches. You know. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. He plays is she football. bad? She look cool. I like her eyes too. Though. Can you turn it so I can see if so I don't get all? She bad. I see her video. She got nice hot cheekbones. Mm. No, she's gorgeous. She is gorgeous, right? So what's the problem is? What I'm saying is, no. Big women have a harder road to go. Oh, yeah. A big dude, Biggie Smalls, women were all over him. Biggie had bitches. Right. Yes or no? Yes. Big Pun had bitches. Yes. Yeah, he's <laughs> big Fat Joe got bitches. Yes. I'm just saying, <laughs> hell, what's my man? Rick Ross got bitches. Got bitches. Oh. I mean, bad <laughs> ones. Yeah. Dimes, yeah. quarters, right. silver dollars in this bitch. Right. Question is, it seems like big men, Barry White, back mm -hmm. in the day. Mm -hmm. Women loved Barry White. Mm -hmm. Seems like big men get a pass for being big more so than big women. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Big women get body shamed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get your fluffy ass, you know. Let that argument happen. The first thing he going to say is something about her weight. Mm -hmm. Am I lying? Mm -hmm. Why is it like that? Um, I think people do that in general, though. I know. You know what I'm saying? I think like, whatever is wrong with you, the first time you argue with a person, they can't wait to whip it out. They got it in the back of their mind, like, let this fat motherfucker say something. <laughs> or whatever it is, you know what I mean? That's it's, why you can't find your dick, fatty! Right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no disrespect, Tiffany is here. And Tiffany could be considered a big girl. True. She's tall. She's not the average weight. She's not the average height. But Tiffany's a bad motherfucker. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> Niggas come in this studio and be like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas change their whole little trajectory. They come in and see Tiffany and be like, oh, mm -hmm. that's what it's about? Mm -hmm. On the thick -um side of the game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tiffany thick than a motherfucker. Thicker than the Bible, my nigga. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Truth. <laughs> Truth. Shit. But, yeah, actually, on that note, uh, I was a plus-size model for six years. So, and I don't even actually fit plus-size clothes. So, it's like an industry reflection that until about three, four years ago when, like, you know, Ashley Graham or girls who are actually plus-size are being plus-size. And even Ashley Graham's only a size 16, too. But, um they were using they use non plus size women to sell plus size women their own clothes like it's it's a thing you know lane, lane right. bryant is really one of the only plus size companies that actually use plus size girls to even sell their products and so it's a huge it's a double standard in our society because again we expect women to want to be desirable desirable for men so that is presumed that you're going to be a healthy weight or look a certain way mm -hmm. so yeah like i i was a plus size model for a long time and it's weird because people would you know then see me in real life and be like wait a minute <laughs> like you ain't even big yeah like, you know so it's it's weird um for me to think about it like why do big men definitely get a, a different kind of pass than big women for sure right yeah. mm -hmm. and when you look at that what is the average size of women in america they said it's a 14 yeah that's the average woman is a 14. Mm -hmm. Only 2% of these bone thin models. What? I shouldn't. Nothing, keep going. Okay, well. <laughs> she she okay. got defensive before you finished. Why are you telling me to be quiet? I, I, was wet. I was trying to wait to see what he was about to say. No, go ahead. You, you said know. models, and I was like, oh, I don't care. Well, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, you little. 
Yeah, what but you I'm, weigh, I about feel 92 like pounds? I'm different because I'm also short. Like, so I don't think it, I don't come off as like bony. I just come off as like a small person. No, but what's weird about Baby Juicy over here? <laughs> Is it Little Juicy or Baby Juicy? Let me get it together. Little Juicy. <laughs> <laughs> she little. How much do you weigh? I have no idea. I'm going to say like under 100 pounds. Under 100 pounds. Yeah, for sure. I would say under 100 pounds. For sure. Right. But this motherfucker is curvier than right. a boomerang. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Sexy. hips and ass. Yes. And she got that little gap. I was paying attention. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Why do everybody bring that up? Well, it's there. <laughs> oh, she's sexy. It's there. So like, I ain't got a gap. curvy than a motherfucker. <laughs> You got it too. I ain't got, I ain't got a thigh gap. I'm telling you, you knew that today. My thighs definitely rub together happily. <laughs> happily. Friction happens daily Friction in this mug. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my God. <laughs> Friction love. <laughs> All right. I feel like with our culture, though, it's always different when we consider like BBW. You know what I mean? Because it's like, if you have curves and everything and you can have like a smaller upper and but then you got like hips and thighs right. so it's like it doesn't even come off that way you know what i mean as opposed right. to like how society is like oh you're you're a plus size and it's like not really because right. even when um like i feel like in certain brands that we shop in um it's not even like a plus size section. It's kind of just like you just get your size as opposed to like the wider companies. They make it like a big deal. Like, okay, now we're going in your sizes over here. So I think it's like a culture thing. And I feel like that's why um, like the whole thing, like some men don't, I feel like it's not as common with black men to be like ashamed of like be with bigger women. But black men ain't ashamed of being with big fat women, white women. True. Big fat white women get love from brothers. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And I think some of them. I wonder is, why I that, that is. Well, hmm. I was gonna say one thing about the BBW like movement right now that I felt that I was thinking about when I saw the topic was there's a huge like distinction between BBW as I feel like it's more thick than yeah. fat. Like when rappers are talking about BBW, they're talking about like Amber Roses in yeah. in Black Chinas. They're not talking about like Gabby's obese, yeah. you know, obese <laughs> women. They're not. They're not talking about that. But they're typically, about- you see a gang of brothers with obese white women. Well, that's a that's cultural it- thing, I think, in regards to what they can get from an obese white woman. Just like some of these women with bigger black men, it's oh. like, oh, do you have money? Do you have? Are you a- so you saying white yeah. women pay like they weigh? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Call us right now, 323-230-4610. If you're a big white woman, please call in and refute Tiffany's claims <laughs> that so, you pay like you weigh. So <laughs> these, these black men that date obese white women, are they small? Some of them. They're, I don't see that. <laughs> I've never Some seen no, no black men. I have. Really? I've seen with skinny, big, tiny, yeah. little, with tiny men with some woman? big old women. Me and it too. doesn't even have to be white either. No, I've seen I tiny, itty bitty, skinny, scrawny men with some big ass women. Me be too. Like, oh, okay, that's uh, how we roll. Okay. Yep, yeah, I've seen Hell them. Nah, they look cool. straight ahead when they see you. They, <laughs> they, they hoping they got blinders on, like, I don't see you. Don't see me. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> They feel like if they not looking, you ain't looking. Nigga, we see you and her. Okay. You ain't got we to turn your y'all. head. I saw you already. Mm-hmm. The number to dial is 323-230-4610. Do you think Americans in general are just superficial, shallow? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. And so a big person is probably someone that is to be ridiculed instead of someone that is to be loved and appreciated. Do you think somebody would pass over a big woman that has all of the qualities, right, that he thinks he wants or, he, or you know, just pass her over like, nah, she's just too big? Yeah, I think it happens every day. Yeah. And that's why a lot of these big women, you know, tend to, you know, live a certain kind of way because they realize like certain what men way? aren't looking at them. A lot, like a lot of, even if I go back to high school, like bigger girls I knew, they were always the super overly jolly, overly happy. They were overly likable. People liked them, but they they were still the girl with tons jolly. of tons of friends, no boyfriends, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, okay, I'm killing it academically. I'm killing it socially because 
hopefully somewhere along the line, all this jolliness is going to hook me a dude that actually likes me. Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So wow. yeah, she is usually killing the game. She usually does have a bomb ass job and she has yeah. her shit together because she's hoping with all that togetherness, some stupid dum dums <laughs> actually reciprocate. And I don't know why I'd be hating it. I hated it. I have three really bomb girls I knew in high school that literally it sucks that they, all of them lost over a hundred pounds before they got a boyfriend after high school. Wow. Wow. Same, callers. same female. We've got some callers. Let's get them on the line. Do you love big old soft fluffy women? <laughs> Tell us the truth, man. Don't 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 hide from us. Don't hide your love <laughs> for the big love, the BBWs. <laughs> You're on the voice of reason. <laughs> What's your name and where you calling from? Speak on it. <laughs> Hey, Big Zoe, what's going on? It's Big E from PA, man. What's up? What's happening, P? <laughs> How you doing, man? Man, we chilling, man. Tell me, man, do you love them big girls? Uh, yo, I don't discriminate on no chicks. It's just like it got to have the vibe. You know what I mean? It's got to be a vibe there. You know, I don't like look at you and be like, oh, you big? Nah, it's got to be a lot. Because I, I, I know some of the most beautiful women that are, that are big girls that like you can actually talk to. They're not on the high horse. And, you know, uh, I got, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So you're saying you know, the skinny girls be right. conceited. The skinny <laughs> girls be conceited and they be on that high horse talking that bullshit. It's like they got they got the attitude like they got options. They got stuff. too many they options, like, right? You know, they can go ahead with all that because I'm like, I'm everyday Joe. I don't care about that. Can you cook? <laughs> you know, that's where I'm at. Are you saying skinny girls are skinny because they can't cook? <laughs> skinny girls are skinny because they don't want to cook. They want to go out. They want to go to the restaurant. <laughs> are you saying big girls don't want to go to the restaurants? You nah, know big girls want to be at Yard House. <laughs> right. You know what? Uh, <laughs> claim jumper. Big <laughs> portion. Ruth Chris. Like, <laughs> buffet, like. No, here's the difference with the big girl. The big girl, you can take her out, but on the next go around, she's taking you over to her house and cooking that good stuff. That's, that's true. Stuff. That's you're true. That. That's true. You're can't you're argue that. that. You can't get that with Shorty 240. She don't want that. Oh, no. Wow. My mother ain't teaching. Especially today's chick. My mother ain't teaching. You get a 30 year old today. Oh, my mother ain't teaching me. My mother ain't teach me. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, Damn. Better turn on the internet. <laughs> you better turn on the internet and watch somebody <laughs> cook something. <laughs> right. <laughs> Make me a hot dog. Damn it. Shit. <laughs> Damn. Man, that is a great question. <laughs> hey, brother, let me just say this, man. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you for calling in. You, man. I'm a 5150 dude. I appreciate everything you do, man. I, I can't wait to catch up to you someday, sometime in the future. Word up. Hey, you know the 5150 is airing live tonight. Special 5150 oh, show man. tonight at 8 o'clock. Don't miss it. I, I swear. What happened to the old dude, man? Your man. What's up with, with the old guy? Man? Bobby? Yeah, Bobby? <laughs> you talking about Bobby? Yeah. Bobby oh, man. Yeah. Bobby is our guy, man. We still down with Bobby. We ain't going to never not be down with Bobby. <laughs> Shit, he sound like one of my brothers, man. But much love to Bobby. All know, right. Together, Appreciate it, man. Thank you for, so much for the call. You got to take it easy, man. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name and where you're calling from? Speak on it. Man, you know it's your homie, Black Ron from Dallas. Why What's happening, you? Dallas? What's up, man? I know you from Dallas. <laughs> you love the thickness of the thighs that can't be apart from each other for too long. <laughs> Where you go? I don't know. He said, yeah, man, and then that was it. That's it. Come on, pimp. Ah, damn. Get back to your phone lines. <laughs> I want to hear from the ladies who are big girls who can't keep niggas off you because niggas be chasing <laughs> them. What is the technical term? I think the technical term is chubby chasers. Yes. They out there chasing big women, trying to front like they not. Somebody just posed the question based off of what you said, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. Do big girls have to have the best personalities? Mm -hmm. Are they the sweetest? Because they have to be if they want to get any kind of attention. That's been my experience. Like I said, I just feel like for a lot of them, it's a defense mechanism. It's helpful, you know, and... 
I, if you think about it, if you can think about a big girl, maybe you knew that maybe wasn't as jolly or happy or friendly. Like it's exaggerated. People be like, oh, that girl right there. Like it's even worse if you happen to be big and you're not happy. People like are angry at you. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah. So in my experience, like I said, a lot of the bigger girls I know are super friendly, super over the top, super great. But for a lot of them, once you get down deep and you're talking to them and you get to know them, like that's a defense mechanism for them. Ah, yeah. I get it. Like a coping strategy. They just got to be nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You better be nice. Or if you notice a lot of them, especially nowadays, are super stylish. Like they be killing in the game. You'd be like, "Ooh, girl, you big, but you you killing it. Because that's how I feel. I'd be like, "Ooh, wait a minute. I Because I, I feel like being curvy and I'm the in-between like thickness, like I, I'm a mess. I don't really know you how to dress a, my body. You a thick of Yeah. <laughs> like I, someone said it one day, they're like, you're one snack away from being fat. I'm like, I know. And I eat that snack every day and then I go run three miles. So um, <laughs> I, I still eat the snack. Right. <laughs> no, she, is, she is straight up thick of I, I hit the gym after I eat that snack. Um, <laughs> don't ever get it twisted. She <laughs> is a bona fide thickalacious. So, so yeah, but I just feel like, yeah, a lot of them overcompensate with other areas to make sure like, hey, I'm still I'm still a thing. I'm still a catch out here, especially like with the makeup movement. A lot of them are makeup bloggers. These big girls killing the makeup game like what? You're right. gorgeous. I don't care what size you are. That face is banging. Yeah, <laughs> we right. have more callers on the line. Caller, welcome to the voice of reason. We we need to know, man. Do you love them that way? Speak on it. Call, are you going to speak on it or not? Man, my bad, fam. I had accidentally muted the phone. My phone died <laughs> just a second ago. This your boy, Black Run from Dallas again. What man. up, Dallas? Speak on it, man. Tell man, the young, truth. Young, Shit. young Metro didn't trust me, man, so it shot the call. Uh, <laughs> being out from Texas, uh, my fiance uh, is six feet tall mm -hmm. and uh, size 16, 18 on the heavy chested side of the game. Mm -hmm. Did what I'm saying. And, uh, mm -hmm. I feel like all men want to procreate. We want relationships with the women that resemble our mamas and our grandmamas. Mm -hmm. But when we out here young, chasing something, trying to have things, then we want trophies out here. We want fancy cars, nice houses, and arm candy. We want that woman that everybody else is vying for because that's a status symbol. But it's really a sign of youth and immaturity. For the same reason that a young, sexy woman want the fat dude because he looks like stability and security. The young dude want the fine woman because she looks like success. But when life hits you and get the whoop in your ass, <laughs> you start realizing that it ain't about appearances. It's really about the relationship. So then you start loving people for who they are on the inside. And you start putting away all of those beauty parameters and criteria that we use when we're younger. That's why we end up having kids and marrying late in our 40s and stuff with a woman that don't look like none of the women we had in high school. Mm. Listen. A woman. <sighs> let, let, me, let me just say this, man. When it comes to the women we had in high school, back in the day, the super bad chick in high school if you look back at her and you go kick it with her now, <laughs> she look crazy. She big as hell. She big her damn self. <laughs> Listen, that I got hurt. a story. I don't want to. I don't want to say this story, but I'm gonna. It was a girl I was head the fuck over heels with. I ain't gonna say her name. All I know is that motherfucker looked like Ola Ray. Ooh. You remember Ola Ray from the Thriller video? Yeah, she was beautiful. Yeah, God yeah. damn, she looked like <laughs> Ola Ray. Listen, this is this this seventh grade, my nigga. Story time with Zoe. Se yeah, yeah, seventh yeah. grade. Here we had two lunches. I had first lunch. She had second lunch. When I was in class. While she was at lunch, she would bring me snacks and shit. Oh, cute. Little mm -hmm. ices and shit. I had the coolest teacher in the world. Motherfucker taught me how to bag. Mr. Harrison. I would miss his class a lot, ditching. Came back to class one day, the nigga was like, I said, listen, man, I, I've been sick. And, you know, that's why I miss your class. You know, it's an English class. This nigga said, you didn't miss my class because you were sick, nigga. 
He talked to me just like, you didn't miss this class because you was sick, nigga. You missed this class because you was eating your mama's doo-doo cookies. That's what the nigga told me. I knew right then, I'm fucking with this nigga for life. <laughs> we bagging? Cool. Doo -doo cookies. So he would allow this girl to come to the steps and bring me shit. She would spend her lunch on the steps of this class. Motherfucker look like Ola Ray. Gore the fuck just. Nigga, I was so scared of this girl because I, you know, I just didn't know how to talk to girls. My homeboy, poet, that's what we call him, been my best friend since we were 12. That nigga got tired of it. He like <laughs> he dealt with it for about a month of her coming to the class, dropping off snacks and shit. That's a long time. Go this ahead, nigga poet. dealt with it for about a month. And then finally, at the end of one of them classes, he just walked up to the girl and said, hey. This nigga said, would you be his girl? <laughs> she was like, really? Oh, oh my God. Yeah, it's okay. And that was my girlfriend for like four months. You know, four months in the seventh grade. Nigga. That's a long That's time. Forever, That's, That's forever, forever time. my nigga. Right. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Shit. I was getting married and she was First writing your all, last yo, name yo, on her yo, notebook homie, and all that homie shit. homie is a real nigga for that one because <laughs> I thought you were going to say he waited a month and then shot up under you and scooped you for that one. That's what I was waiting on you to say. Because oh, no, oh, he no. would have been well within his rights. You sat on the bullet for a month and didn't do shit. Yeah, but it's hard. He, it's, he, he a real one for that one. It's hard to scoop a light-skinned nigga in the 80s. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, yes. I was very cocky. Right there, was very cocky <laughs> you know, a light skin green eyed nigga in the cocky. 80s is hard. Right. Light skin green eyed nigga in the 80s is real hard to scoop in it. Right. <laughs> can, I ask, can I ask the ladies this question? <laughs> mm hmm. Uh, particularly, uh, I don't want to mess her name up, but the, the young polyamorous, light skinned, beautiful young lady. Uh, with the sordid history and the ex-husbands and whatnot. Oh, me. Um, I'm, I'm done with I'm this polyamorous. Ooh, yeah. Sordid histories. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga's ripped. He even taking notes. Um, Why yeah. is he here? Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Man, I, man, listen, listen. Long time listener, first time caller. You did. I, but, I uh, fuck with it. Let's go. <laughs> okay, to the ladies, let me pose this question. Because I, I remember not too long ago, um, there was an episode where we were discussing the worth of a man uh, based on his financial means. And uh, my man Jeff Brown posed an uh, interesting question that if the, if the dollar lost his value, would the man inherently lose his value in a woman's eyes? Wait, hold on. And I said hold that on. to say... All right, let me see where it's going. Let's see. Go ahead. I said that to say, if a man... Is, um, put on the scale of worth based on his material asset and women always talk about the standards that they have regarding what a man should earn uh his ambition not to mention uh his package and what he can deliver in the bedroom why is it then when a man puts forth his standards about what type of woman he wants physically then women immediately begin attacking him Oh, that nigga got to be gay. Your mama was big. What's wrong with a big girl? Okay. This, that, and the other. Right. Why is it that a man can't have those same standards of greatness that a woman has? Why is it that a woman settles when she with a broke nigga? Is it that a man is settling when there he get go. with a woman that's out of shape? All right. I, I can rock with that. I was trying to see where it was going. Yeah. It came back around. I fuck with that. Y'all going to answer his question or y'all going <laughs> to bullshit? Well, I, well, okay. So my answer is I, I Ooh, don't. Oh, that sounds like that. bullshit. That sounds no, no, like no. bullshit. Um, <laughs> I like to give my answer and then society's answer because I don't usually be in line with society, but I'll own, I'll own where society fucks up. Society wants you to just like women for whatever. There's a double standard. Like, take us as we are. Like, my friend and I joke. We're like, only one of us can be a, a work in progress, and it's us, not you. Right. So that's 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 like how society feels like men should take women as we are. But men should be together because, again, women expect men to be, you know, security and be stable or whatever. For me, on the flip side, my whole thing is I love big girls and I don't think we should body shame them. But I am a person who is about health. So if your reason for not dating a big girl is you're like, well, I'm in fear for your health or that's not attractive to me because it's unhealthy. I feel you. It's the same reason I don't think I would particularly ever date a big dude because I'm active. I'm out here running. I'm in the gym. I'm eating a certain kind of way. 
And if you're not in line with that, this is not congruent with my lifestyle. So, like, so I you get think. It. Right. I've met big dudes who like, you know, are still athletic and they're hooping at the rec center all the time and they're eating a certain kind of way. So I said, for the majority of it, that's not what I've been, you know, run into yet. But that's my reasoning for like more likely why I wouldn't be attracted to a bigger dude. That's why I love when the universe hit y'all with the karma. Oh, man. Y'all don't even know <laughs> yo, your fucking soulmate is fat. <laughs> Might be. And then he just Hell show no. up and rock your shit in a different way. Might and then be. Here right. you are suffering from relationship cognitive dissonance. How? What? So, <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Speak on it. Right. Is it that soulmates exist or is it that people get to a point where they've um, gotten so lonely that they're willing to acquiesce that list? No, I believe it's For both. Companionship. No, I believe it's both. There's people that tap out and they just say, Hell yeah. like, all right, I'm going to just do it. Hell and they, yeah. they give up on the soulmate thing. That's yeah. right. I, I'd rather I'd rather get a half of somebody than, than to keep on waiting for that one to come and that one might not never be there. I might have fucked it up with that one when I was 20. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I done fucked it up with several ones. <laughs> When I, tell you, I don't think soulmates <laughs> exist. I don't think soulmates exist for the simple fact that women outnumber men roughly three to one worldwide. But so I think God made but, one well, man for every one woman. What about the mother two chicks? But they I, together but doing it. Well, wait a minute though. First off, that's why God created cheating, and then to come back. <laughs> no. wait, hold on, God created no. everything. God damn it! And no. then to come back. True. Right. No, seriously. But right. then to come back. A lot of people cut off their options because of their preferences. Yes. So mm. if I'm preferring skinny, I might be ignoring the soulmate in the big girl. That right. Or in the big guy. Right. 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 Just based on preference alone. When we talk about soulmates, what here's the only misnomer about soulmates that exists. Motherfuckers think that you only get one. That's the thing. They only think it's one. It's plural. It's, it's soulmates. The more compatible human for you. Right. It's soulmates. It's yes. not just one person. It could be multiple people. The problem mm. is a lot of times people have not prepared themselves to accept a soulmate into their life. Meaning right. they haven't done the personal work. So when the soulmate comes, they recognize it mm -hmm. or they're in a position to accept the person as they are when they get them. So it's a lot of variables. But to say that they don't exist, I just think that's impossible. Right. When science has already proven everybody is coming from the same source of energy at the lowest level or at the most infinitesimal level of existence. Right. It's called this field of infinite possibilities. Well, if the scientist is calling it the field of infinite possibilities, how is that different from a Hindu saying it's God, it's Brahman, right? Or a Muslim right. saying it's Allah, or a Christian saying it's the Holy Ghost? All that shit is the same shit, just different words. I believe we're all a part of that one source. And if that's the case, the motherfucker who's most connected to that, that's soulmate material. Mm -hmm. So is it more like magnetism, where the stronger the reaction is, the more you bond to that? Well, you have to factor in because this. Since we all op from the same, since we all operate from the same field of energy, right? And then more so speaking, um, let me ask you this question: If you haven't yet found your soul, could you find your soulmate? Of course not. Right. Well, you might have come across them, but you won't recognize them. You get right. you yeah. get whatever level of development you're at personally. Mm -hmm. That's who you get at okay. that time. Mm-hmm. That's what Dig you get. That. I'm gonna say one more thing, man, <laughs> and then I'm gonna free up the line so that I can listen. Well, and Jesus, thank you. Like everybody yeah. else. You didn't ask 36 uh, questions. <laughs> right, 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 right. I, I, but going towards your point, on behalf of all the real niggas out there, because I know that this is probably gonna be a feminine uh, control show today, let me say this on behalf of all the real niggas that will not speak honestly. Um, dudes will knock off and smash every big girl around. Um, but we won't marry them. We'll marry. We'll try to marry wow. the fine girl wow. because we want a girl that everybody else wants. But we'll smash something that feels good. Wow. And everybody know big girls feel good. It might not be true. Uh, it, it might not be right, but it's real. You know what I'm saying? Wow. We gonna I go after that. the easy kill. There's a whole pack of wildebeest out here. We gonna knock off the sick ones first. 
Oh, here we go. Not Thank you, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, my God. The sick ones. <laughs> Listen, my oh. homeboy Ronan. Ronan Martin is going to be out here soon. Oh, yes. <laughs> Ronan, oh, he's going to be out here this weekend. Right. We, we, doing, right. we doing the Ontario Improv with Corey Holcomb. Oh, so I'm going to mm-hmm. miss it. Never mind. We're going to be down there. The shit's going to... Oh, look who's hey. in hey. here. Hey, chocolate. She got her hair did. Got her hair did. Come in there looking all. Del- got, hey, got her I, hair hey Phil. Sorry. Phil, I'm going to say this. And this is the last time I'm going to say this. That is a married woman. Don't you ever look at her like that again. <laughs> Hilarious. This motherfucker Phil was like, who had hey. said what had said? Right. <laughs> Listen, my homeboy Ronan just tweeted me the worst shit ever. <laughs> he said, I don't believe in soul food mates. Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 Ronan. <laughs> Ronan! Soul food mates. <sighs> Listen, let me just say this too about uh, about depression mm. and body shaming, right? Because they go hand in hand. Yes. The reason why depression can creep up into your spirit is because society is based on envy and comparison. Right. So when you get a big girl, it's just like it's the same thing with black people. If Jesus or God in the Bible or none of the Bible really reflects you racially, mm. when you look at all the pictures, all the pictures is white. Mm-hmm. So subconsciously you're going, well, goddamn, all the demons are black. Well, I'm black. <laughs> you know, you subconsciously is it? Well, am I evil? <laughs> You feel what I'm saying? Right. So with a big girl, if society's narrative is you big, Mm -hmm. get your big ass on the treadmill, right? There's going to be a natural kind of depression Mm -hmm. that comes along with that. Right. Right. Well, I might might as well marginalize myself because I'm not small. right? Right. You feel what I'm saying? But the reality of it is the majority of America's women are 14 and above. Right. Size 14 and above, right? So there has to be a certain level of acceptance and not only acceptance, but then celebration, yes. appreciation of whatever body size you have. Mm-hmm. I can remember when I was a young cat, I was dating this sister. And to me, listen, not only to me, but to a gang of dudes, she was pretty, but she was thick. She was really thick. When I say really thick, let me let me quantify that. Like, because I don't want to I don't want to convey that she was fat because bigger or smaller than me. <laughs> she was smaller than you. OK, but she was still considered thick, thick, mm-hmm. like thick, <laughs> right? especially in high school. Right. You said high school. No, this this is this is when I was in my early 20s. Okay. Right. She was sexy than a motherfucker. She was beautiful. Like a motherfucker. And of course, I did her wrong, too. I ain't shit. Mm-mm. I love her to death, though. Mm-mm. She was Scorpio. Ooh, that's the first time you've said a Scorpio in a long time. No, nah, she was Scorpio. I love hey. the way she was just, nigga, you my man. Fuck what's going on. That's how right. she was. She was like, nigga, we together, nigga. Now you get it together because we together. Right. She just told me what the fuck was going down. I was like, all right, cool. Well, fuck it then. <laughs> you know? Oh, God. But fuck then, it. We together. Yeah, right. but then I didn't, you know. But then I, you fucked it up. I'm a Gemini. I was kind of like, we, yeah, sure. Not really. Yeah, today. <laughs> you know, Don't tell all of our <laughs> secret <laughs> shit. I was, on, I was on some stupid Gemini immature shit like, <laughs> meh, mm-hmm. meh. <laughs> we didn't. I like it for now. <laughs> right. For now. But when I tell you this motherfucker was down like four flat tires, I wish she was around now. She was down like four flat tires. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Damn. I do, but that just made me think. Did you actually finish the seventh grade story? Was there like a punchline like 20 years later she's super fat or something? She is. Okay. <laughs> I was like, did we ever finish that I did, story? I, I didn't finish that story. <laughs> okay. But she is. She's okay. a big girl now. And almost 
unrecognizable. Oh, wow. I know somebody like that. I, I mean, oh, me too. It That's was a sad. it was beautiful. Like when we was when we were young. You always say that, and then you give them like the full legal name. So just God, tread yeah. slightly, please. Oh, so the homies, <laughs> the homies used to call her Texas titties. Ooh. Hey, mommy, because she wow. had nice breasts. Right, hey. <laughs> but she was bad. She looked like Olorek. Mm. So, you remember that pizza joint called Showbiz? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then later on, you get Chuck E. Chuck Cheese. Cheese, right? Yeah. But it was Showbiz, showbiz first. Is. Her sister worked over there. She was like, come to showbiz and hang out. I was like, yeah. Oh, shoot. I'm in the seventh grade, my nigga. <laughs> you understand? I'm on the I'm on the motherfucking bus, my nigga. <laughs> Over to showbiz. Right. This is some puppy love type shit. Aww. We don't even eat in front of each other. Aww. <laughs> She gets up and leaves. I eat some of the pizza. She comes back. I get up and leave. She eats some of her pizza. What is wrong like, with It was some puppy love. This is when niggas wasn't fucking in junior high. Right. Oh, they had the babies fuck? in my high school. I, I know. Yeah, shit. Nowadays, niggas is doing all types of shit in junior high. This is when it was some innocent puppy love type shit. Why right. Is this happening? She was so beautiful. And, and I lost contact with her for many, many years after we graduated from high school now when we get to high school we do different people you know you know how it is when you're young a summer nigga you'll come back you're a different person right all together over the summer you somebody else Mm -hmm. so in high school we weren't that tight like we were in in middle school junior high Mm -hmm. but she was still bad than a motherfucker the natural boy in me was (laughs) do you understand like so, but in high school, we don't really, we don't really hang. We don't really vibe. We in different circles, kind of, you know what I mean? One day I was like, I wonder what happened to whoop de whoop She reaches out to me out of the blue on some psychic connection type shit. Oh, sure. And was like, yo, she reached out to me through the high school website, like for our class or whatever. And I went and looked her up. I don't know why I was so disappointed. Whoa. Because when I tell you the motherfucker is sweeter than a sweet potato cake. She God. brought you snacks and everything. Snacks. Yeah, man. She got Mm-mm. big all of a sudden. I was just I didn't know how to process it. You know how niggas, you know, you're not thinking, oh, she had babies, and she's married, and, you know, you're not thinking about n- none of that shit. You just think it selfishly, like, she don't look the same. Who this woman? <laughs> like, but, man, when I tell you, heartthrob. Wow. She was a knock. I wish it. Let me I'll fuck around and pull up some shit so y'all can see. <laughs> that would be wrong. So you'll probably do it later, right? Right. Yeah, I'll <laughs> but I'm just, who, who's playing music? What's going on? Jesus. Not me. <laughs> I had to check. Like, uh... So I'm just going to say it again. This is a shallow motherfucking world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And unfortunately, the people who consider to, not, you know, not be aesthetically pleasing, those are the ones who get this fucking short end of the stick most of the time. And those are the ones that got to fucking bend the knee in relationships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know I leave your big ass? Do you know that? <laughs> it's, it's not really funny. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, God. Have any of you guys dated a big guy? I have. Yeah. One of my favorite people yeah. is big right now. One of my favorite people is, well, he's not like super big, but he's big. Mm, I've dated a big boy. He didn't want to take his t-shirt off ever, though. He didn't want to let See, the stomach really be seen. So I never really seen the, the, you know, but yeah, he was hiding behind it. Because I know it's every time. Niggas, if you big, t-shirt. you can't hide behind the t-shirt. So right. that's the thing. Like, but, you might as well take it off. But he didn't want to take the t-shirt off he ever. He put a beater on. No, n- no, t-shirt, full t-shirt, four X, five X, God damn, six X, 
<laughs> so I, think that, I think that's what turns that. me on about the dude right now is mm-hmm. that he like even though he's bigger like he is just loud and in charge like proud like you just strut naked like yeah that's right like you like yourself still whereas my ex just had like a little gut he's not big but he had like yeah gut he, I tell people like he would fuck with this beater I'm like I've known you 10 years I know what's under there like take it off like fuck you know but if you like if you if you big and confident, something's sexy about that. Like, I'm like, hey. But, but you somebody know. said, somebody in the chat room said he didn't want them big ass titties to fly out. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, no, the one that I used to date that was big, he was like a big daddy in town. Like, you know, he pulls up, he's in Bentley Rolls Royce. He just got rolls too, so he didn't want you to see. You know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Like, yeah. he was confident in the streets, but I think when it comes down to unveiling oneself I think that there was some insecurities but I think the same thing happens with women some Mm -hmm. women if they're really big they want you to turn off the lights hurry up and get under the covers you know don't look too hard at whatever they think they're feeling insecure about you know what I mean but some women that are big they got more confidence than some skinny women so don't get it twisted some of these big girls they got confidence they got swag they got personality and you know they'll 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 marry a man. A man will marry them because of that confidence. They bring yeah. something to the table. They pan like they weigh, or maybe they was just together. She got big, and he's sticking and staying. Right. Mm-hmm. Sticking yeah. and staying. Sticking. Arlene, <laughs> have you ever dated a big dude? Uh, do you find them attractive? I do find big men attractive. I f- I find all types of men attractive. Who is the biggest dude that you think? <laughs> Is the most attractive big dude ever? Oh, let me see. Think Who about think it. The... Okay, so I used to have a crush. Here we go. <laughs> on Cedric the Entertainer. There you go. <laughs> Lot of women so, love Ceddy. He was so funny, and like he loved Lavita, and I was like, I want somebody to have that corny love for me. So, and he, I liked him. Lot of women oh, love that. I thought he was dope. I was like, I could get me one of those. You That's know? what she called him, Seti. Yes. A lot of women want a Seti. Man, look, it, it, you could either, I saw it like this. You can get those guys who didn't want to show you affection, didn't want to be like, be like claiming you and be proud to be with you. Or you could get you a Seti who might be corny as hell, but he loves you and he don't care who knows. He is proud to have you on his arm. He just loves you and makes sure you know. And I was like, I will take a Seti wow. over somebody that's going to make me chase him. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, and then, here we and go. then he was funny too. Here we so, go. I hear I I hear some type of coping and mechanism I, and look, in that. I had um, I was anemic. I was trying to stay warm too. <gasps> hey, so, you know what? You so know women what? do it too. I'm just honest. You know, I had I literally had this friend in college. He was six foot five. He was like two fifty. This really really big dude. And he was just a friend of mine. I used to have him walk me to class. Because he was so big when it was like windy and rainy, and I would walk in his coat, <laughs> and he would drop me off at class, and I just walk out from underneath his coat. When I was on that the foxhole, <laughs> hilarious. When I was on the foxhole, I had a producer. His name was Ajante. Okay. Ajante was. I'm gonna say, uh, in, a, in a modest, this is a modest guesstimation. He's a good brother. Good brother. I would say at that time he was about shit, 430. Okay. That's a lot. He was big. Yeah, my, my soon to be ex brother in law is over four hundred pounds. He yeah, he was sure. a big dude. Yeah. And I remember when I first got if this is like mm-hmm. twenty eleven, <laughs> I was in a mini Cooper. Yes, so I go ahead, got so. A brand oh, yeah, new, that girl got you. That's Mini Cooper. That's a brand right. new Mini Cooper, right? <laughs> I mean, I paid for the motherfucker. I know, but you let her pick it out. But she but picked she, it out. She, she took care of all the shit. <laughs> got me in a goddamn Mini Cooper. Right? <laughs> I had that motherfucker about two, three days. <laughs> this shit was still whippy and crispy and, you know. <laughs> He called me and was like, hey, man, can you give me a ride <laughs> to the studio? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I was like, yeah, nigga. <laughs> Many rides you done gave me? Absolutely, my nigga. I'm going to be over there. 
When I tell you that nigga filled up the whole side of that Mini Cooper. You know what? He had to put the seat on the back Listen, seat. Listen, that whole shit, I was worried. I said, is this shit going to break? <laughs> because you, cause the Mini Cooper is deceptive. You think that shit little, you get in, and that motherfucker is spacious on the yeah. inside. So I'm like, okay, maybe this will work. But when I tell you, when that nigga got in that car, that nigga filled that car up like it was a pint. <laughs> you understand? Like, I was out and driving, and I noticed the incline. Like, nigga, we over here, my nigga. Wow. We tilted in this bitch. Sorry. Right, right. Oh, I'm sorry. Hilarious. Oh, I feel so bad for laughing. That's my nigga, though. But let me tell you, girls was all over that nigga. Goodness. I had another homegirl. Her name was <laughs> Tiffany. We be down at the goddamn conga room. Ajante is down there at the conga room with us. When I tell you, she laying all over this nigga like a beanbag. I just like big guys. She was just all over. <laughs> Girls love big teddy bear ass niggas. I know this motherfucker right here. This nigga's a baby bear right here. Baby cub. <laughs> <laughs> I know the little Gerald Levert look over here getting his. He got to stop saying that. <laughs> Gerald Levert was another one I had a crush Oh, on. yeah. Gerald Levert was hot. You understand what I'm saying? And, and Eddie. I liked Eddie, too. I'm sorry. Eddie Levert? Yes. I don't remember who he is. Man, let me tell you. Eddie Levert in concert for Essence Festival with his white suit on. Oh, God. I, I don't remember I was remember like, that. I'm in love. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Look at you looking at me you're like no. <laughs> I was. I'm sorry. Oh god. <laughs> Ladies who love big man. <laughs> oh grizzly bear built man. Right? Call in. Sh profess your love for big men. A lot of women feel protective with big dudes. Mm -hmm. Let me climb in your shirt pocket while you get this nigga oh, off god. us. Oh. Yeah, big dudes. 323 230. 4610. Caller, you're on the air. What's your name and where you calling from? Speak on it. Uh, this is Jeff Brown. What's oh, going shit. On? Turn your whole life down, Jeff. <laughs> Here we go. Turn my life down. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. There. How's that? <laughs> What's happening, people? <laughs> oh, shit. What's going on, ladies? Hey. 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 Hi. Um... I, I, I'm digging the show so far. I just think that there's a big white elephant in the room that nobody's paying attention to with this. And that is, of course, big, beautiful women are in fashion for someone. They have been since the beginning of time. Right. Big dudes ain't no big. And, and, and to, the, to the dudes that secretly date big women. Big women need to banish them niggas and they need to kill themselves, okay? Yes. You stop with this closet dating big girls. If you're going to be with a big girl, take her big ass out in the light, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not making love if you can only fuck with the lights out. That's not love. Mm -hmm. Two. Right? Two. There is no, there are no dudes that I know of, which is why the other side of that coin for me is that I don't necessarily give more credit to or sympathize with big women because there there is a there is porn dedicated you can put bbw in on Pornhub and get five thousand videos amateur and pro of niggas laying the pipe to big bras mm -hmm. the reverse is not true ain't no fat strippers eating ain't no fat dudes eating off of being fat just because women pay them there's not uh -huh. so it, there, there's no equality there. Yeah, you got the Chub Rocks, you got the Heavy D, you got your boy Shante, like you was talking about. But ain't no niggas eating donuts hoping bitches gonna catch them and find them attractive because they ate all them donuts. That that's that's at the end of the day, it's because um, there's too many L's connected with with penis that aren't with vagina. There's two. Here's, 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 <laughs> okay, if, if, if you take a you take a dude, you take a dude. If a dude gets some broke pussy, some stank pussy, 
some irresponsible pussy, some violent pussy. Uh, all of that's all of that's W's. Fat pussy. That's all in the W column. If a woman getting some violent dick, some broke dick, some stanky dick, oh all that's God. in the L's. That's L's for y'all. Those are W's for us. So right there, <laughs> there's an inequity that nobody's paying attention to. There's almost no reason to really make a big deal out of big, beautiful women because there's already a big deal being made out of big, beautiful women. There was a club, I don't know if it's still around, there used to be a club called Bounce. Oh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. This was a club out in Long Beach exactly. that was specifically for big women, and it stayed mm-hmm. packed. And I don't mean just because all the women was fat. I mean, <laughs> it was packed because dudes was constantly down there. Mm-hmm. There is a demographic for them. There is a, a market carved out. That's why I don't like this shit where they try to shame niggas that don't want them. Go to the niggas that do. There's plenty of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Jeff. We appreciate your You're high pitched. Now I'm going to oh. go back to this weed. <laughs> thank I'm you, brother. Weed. I'm enjoying the show. Man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's if you've just tuned in. Mm-hmm. Today's topic Shallow Hal. A deeper look at men who are BBW curious. Are you curious about bigums? Sexual bigums. There's a lot of men out there who are curious about sexual bigums. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the benefit of sexual bigums outweighs the drama that comes with skinny girls with a gang of options and attitude. 323 230 4610. That's the number to dial. Well, my thing for even for Jeff, and I, I don't know if any of us had really a touch point on it. I don't think any of us argued that they're not getting any as much sex but i think we were saying things and jeff touched base on it like if you're not willing to take her out in public you shouldn't be fucking with her and you should cut him off but i think that's really the issue is yeah there's a market we've made it even a fetish like men who like big girls but they're fucking you and they're not taking you out can big do big girls get the same level of access to intimacy not just sex Mm. Yeah, because big girls can pull it. Yeah, like those same girls I was talking about in high school, they might have been smashing, but they were the girls who were smashing in oh, private. Yeah. The dude who had a girl, the skinny bitch girlfriend, and she knew she couldn't tell nobody. Mm. Right? Like, oh yeah, I can, I can get sex. A lot of women know they can get sex, but can I get you to take me to a damn movie? Yeah, and go you know? out in public. With me. Or shoot, yeah. some dudes ain't taking out the skinny girls to that's the movie. Some dudes right. are just smashing <laughs> when they can smash. Yeah, so I mean. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know yeah. what I'm saying? At the end of the day, like, yeah. it's 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 just kind of like I think the person. Because I've seen big girls out with skinny dudes a lot of times. Mm-hmm. I know some dudes married to big girls. Mm-hmm. But I think that, you know, it's kind of like when a woman has a lot of options, she may not be as uh, submissive or vulnerable, whatever the case may be, to the man that maybe he's like, hey, I want this. And she's doing everything it takes to have that man. And he's with it. And they have a great life together. I think that... It's nothing wrong with that, though. What about big girl hygiene or big people hygiene? Do you think it's difficult to maintain? I think they might have to wash certain areas. But <laughs> other than that, I think that this is, I mean, it's you know what I'm true. saying? I think I think that they need to take care of it. But at the same time, some of them smell like bath and body and some smell like baloney. It just depends <laughs> on and, what you're doing. And again, I think for women in general, like, Every woman is different. So, like, there's some people I know that just sweat a lot, like, more Me. than the average person. Me. Exactly. But it mm-hmm. don't have nothing to do with your size. It right. can just be something, you know. So, I think it it doesn't even necessarily matter. But, again, depending on the size you are, I know, obviously, they need to take more showers right. a day. But that's something that they're going to have to just maintain because of the situation that they're in. Yeah. Or even just reaching. Because that's episodes we see on, like, Maury and stuff, right? Like, oh, my husband got so big, I got to wash for him and stuff. Right. Like, now, if you're that big, yeah, that's that's a concern for me because again, you're you're to a point where you can't maintain your own hygiene. Right. That might be an issue for me. Right. But I mean, I don't know until I meet you. Like I know big dudes are super fresh. Mm-hmm. You know, right. like super super fresh. Right. Like maybe yeah, you got a little more coverage to cover, but just be in the shower longer. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and some mm-hmm. big dudes they overcompensate. Like the big women do. They're nicer. They're cooler. They you know when you're around them. I mean, just like Biggie. 
one thing I liked about Biggie, he was funny. Like in his raps, you could hear the how cool he was. You know, he was a storyteller. I mean, I just said all that to say I think that when you look a certain way, you overcompensate with your swag, your talk, whatever you have, you utilize it. I mean, I think all people do it. If you're skinny and you know my stomach is tight, I'm going to have my stomach out. If you're fat and you know your thighs is popping, though, you're going to have them thighs out. Check the thighs out, though. I might right. be big, but these thighs is popping. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's such an interesting difference being out here in California because in New Orleans, is very much a fit girl city. Like, they yeah. like those thick girls. It's mm-hmm. like, I remember, <laughs> I remember going places and they'd be like, so, uh, you eat? Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, I eat all day. What right. you mean? You know, but it was, it was definitely a thing Wait where. Wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> See, that, you, you're right, because I'm from the South, too, but the stigma in the South is weird because your ass is thick. <laughs> well, no, no, no. She's small, but, wait, but wait. God damn it, curvy than a motherfucker. But wait, wait, wait. And it's also, not the same. But you also are meeting me as an older woman. When you're talking when about you're little, yeah, 17, yeah. 18, yeah, 19, 20 year old really Arlene, who was like, I was 98 pounds soaking wet like this on one? a good day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me tell you That's something. Like this I, had, firefly. I had a whole phone <laughs> conversation celebration when I hit 100 pounds. And oh. I was living in California at that point. Oh, wow. So I'm telling you, like, when you're talking about you between that 95 and 98 pound weight class <laughs> yeah. in New Orleans, and they looking at you like a good, strong one gonna come and blow you over. I can't, you know. Right. They're like, you know. I you, need to feed you e- up. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it was it was a different right. thing. Because, like, with my sister, my sister and I, are we're both made very opposite. My sister is thicker. She's shorter than me. She's more heavy set. Mm-hmm. But when we go home, they looking at her. Yeah. When she come here, they looking, looking at, at you. me. Right. And it's a very different thing, especially for me growing up in that kind of environment. Coming here, I was like, why are you looking at me? <laughs> it was uncomfortable because I didn't, I wasn't used to that kind of attention. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's it's different depending on where you go. I mean, mm-hmm. they they look at it like, I mean, you got baby making hips, but you ain't got no meat on them. Right. You know? <laughs> you know? Right. So, but, so let me ask you all this really quickly. Which gender criticizes big women the most men or women y'all gonna tell us the truth or y'all gonna play reindeer no, games no I'm, I'm gonna tell you um in my opinion i think it's women women i think women will shame other women before anybody else has a chance and the men i think tend to follow suit because they trying to get in good with that girl so if they sitting there mm-hmm. talking about if that girl is sitting there talking about these big women they not gonna sit there and say well i like big women or i'm trying to holler at her if they they're not gonna sit there and say that because they'll be like, oh well, that's a bad thing. But I think in general it sets the tone with women, with women who look down on other women because they need a re- reason to feel better. So it's like, okay, well, you know that that big woman she ain't this this and this, and then I think it tends to follow suit. I think women can be mean and but, nasty. <laughs> but I, I I don't know. I, I agree with her, but I, I did I differ in this angle. I think when a man a man sees a woman, she got a fat ass and he like it. He don't care if you say this bitch is fat. He like shit, she got a fat ass though. And I'll hit that. <laughs> like I don't you know what I mean? I'm not you know what I'm saying? Like they whatever they like, big titties, big ass, if it's the lips, as if it's the dimples, whatever a man likes, he identifies with. You just uh, you don't want to turn the volume down on your phone. That's not me. It's not our phone. Whose phone yeah, is? It's not, phone. it's not mine. It's somebody's phone. It keeps coming in and out, and it's not me. I can't God doesn't like it. ugly. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's not, not me. <laughs> My whole phone's on silent in every way there could be. Look, I got a funny story. I had these neighbors, and I'm not gonna say how close they were because then it might. If they're listening, they'll know it's them. But they were both big. Like she may have been 200 and. 70 and he might have been 490 like he was Damn. so big he couldn't even go out the back door he would have to go out the front door sideways so one time i had to go in their house for a reason or two and when i went in there they had their mattresses on the floor and i said dang that makes sense because they big ass can't get in the bed together because it would crash you know if they the put me in work the foundation the whole yeah. thing would crash down and everything so it was real interesting to me because 
And then I just imagined what was they doing when they was doing it. So I figured she, he lay down and she handled it because I can't see no other way. That's the, actually, <laughs> my brother-in-law no and my way. sister-in-law are the same <laughs> way. He's so big. Like they can't, you, like they can't have a bed frame, like an actual bed set, right? right. Like it has to be box spring. Actually, I don't even know. They do, they do. They just have two mattresses on top of each other. Then it's not even on box the floor. spring. <laughs> yeah, because it's the same thing. Like my brother-in-law is 400 pounds and she's like 240. 250. Ooh. So it's like between so the two together, of them. together, that's 700. Right. right. Like, what bed was made for that? Not a lot of them. So, right. like, they just do. They need and I thought a the same thing. Like, frame. There's no way, like, my, he has a bad back and bad knees. I'm like, okay, she's just on top yeah. every time. It has to be. Aluminum and carbon fiber. Right. Bed spring. They need, like, some reinforcements to hold all that love. Up off the ground. Right. And then the, right. Mattress, the mattresses don't even look the same. They look like smushed a little bit. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, th- those are the things, like, when you're like, okay, would you be with the big person? How big? Like, things that you don't have to think about. Like, my mother in law and father in law, and like, even my brother in law and stuff, like, there's certain things you get to a size and things are more complicated. Like, airlines will charge you more so you can have, like, the handicapped seat. You can't fit in certain rides at the amusement park. Like, my brother-in-law has never got, hasn't gone on a roller coaster in, like, 15 years, not because he doesn't like roller coasters. It's because, like, he literally can't fit mm-hmm. in the roller coaster. Like, there's certain things you can't do with your children or whatever. So, that's where I start thinking, like, uh, we don't have to get to it when we get to it. Like, if I love yeah. you and you're that big, we don't figure it out, right? Like, right. but, um, yeah, so, I don't know. They, they just have other... Things that as like a quote unquote normal or atypical sized person, we don't even have to think about. Would any of you say, say, say your significant other, male or female, started off as super fine, super fit, super gorgeous, Mm. and then they got fat. Mm. Would you break up with them? If your mate. No. (laughs) That you loved. You, the first one you fell in, like, yeah, this is what I want. Mm-mm. I'm not leaving them. I'm going to try to help them. Like, you know, I'm going to say, let's go walk in the dog tomorrow. What if they don't well, want to? I was about to say, if you don't want to, I'm sorry. What if, he, what if he doesn't want to? Yeah. But I love him. I'm not going to leave him because he got fat. I, if I genuinely love you, that would be so cliche and shallow. I'm going to leave my man I've been with, with for 10 years because you got a fat stomach now. Are you kidding me? I'm going to hold him down. Now, if it gets to a point where he can't walk out the door and all that, I'm gonna say we gotta get nurses for you and stuff because this is becoming too much. I mean, because you you gotta get some, you need some help. This is my thing. I'm yes because if you don't want to get help, like, like come on, because I feel like it's just gonna. It's not as simple as oh you just got big. It's gonna affect a lot of different things, and so I just feel like taking that into consideration is it worth it? Like this whole lifestyle change and like why don't you care about your health in the first place? Because that's selfish in itself. They start. Start yeah. off like my little cousin here. He fine. And if he got fat, it's a wreck. He's fine. They start off like my little cousin. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> start off like him and then end up on the chunky side of the Mr. game. Mr. Clump. It's then what? Happen. And I can't I can't fake like I'm going to be one of that. Like it's going to ruin my, the sex life. I already know. And then what do you have? It's like, come on mm-hmm. now. Well, you obviously ain't got shit if you ain't got sex. Well, I'm going to tell him just lay down. Let me jump on board. I can't even be in it no more. Like, I'm not attracted to it. I don't care about you like that. Just don't be. (laughs) I mean, to me, you. you Would you leave? (laughs) Tell the truth, goddammit. Would you leave? Would you be like, Salam alaikum, nigga? I, I'm not leaving. Goodbye. Right you, I, I'm not leaving right I away. Wouldn't leave because, I wouldn't leave because he's fat. I would leave because he doesn't care about his exactly. health and how it affects right. us and okay, our family. There it exactly. Is. Because, I mean, if I oh, see if I shit. see my man gaining weight, you know, then, yeah, I'm going to have that conversation with him. Like, hey, we need to work on this because I... When the bigger you get after a certain size, you are starting to think about different health aspects. If, exactly. I'm ha- if we have kids and we have all these things, you know... You are putting yourself at a higher risk for blood, for high blood pressure, for diabetes. What if he's like, listen, I know what I'm doing. But let me tell you something. No, you don't. Let me tell you something. (laughs) I'm a my real real shit though. Like, you are putting us in a position where I could be a widow by your health choices. Mm -hmm. My children can be cannot have a father because of your health choices. Maybe that's in our future. Well, my thing is this, then you don't, you're not really concerned about being there for my kid's future then, exactly. because if you don't want to be there and you don't want to be able to 
be there with your grandchildren. You don't want to be able to have a, have a quality of life where we could travel, we could do things with our family, our kids, 50 years down the line and our grandchildren. That's a concern for me. Mm-hmm. That's a problem for me because yeah. I want to share my life with this person when I'm 70 and 80 years old. I want to be sitting on the porch rocking with you. So this and is if, about you. Huh? You know it what? Is. This is about what you want. But you know what? Yeah. If you want to be selfish, yeah, it is about me. But, it is about what I want for us and our family and our kids. But I care but about know, your health. But you know what? I mean, I feel what she's saying, but the only thing I can say that I differ from is that if I'm married to a man, right, and I'm having, I say I had six or seven kids and I'm fat. So he leaves me because I'm fat. Then I'm going to be mad talking about why he leave me because I'm fat. So for me, I feel like I would try to work with the situation if we can. Only because if... Things happen when you're married to somebody. A person could get hurt. They could get sick. What about a person that gets sick? You gonna leave him because he's sick now? That's so horrible. That's, so, oh, so I, so I would like to see if I can help them and be down for them. And if not, then we can't. You know what I'm saying? No, like, he I needs to love know himself. About marriage, of I course. thought it was like dating. Are we talking about marriage or dating? That's why no. I was like, that's why I was what like, are yeah. We, are we talking about marriage or dating? We know good and well if y'all was dating, y'all would leave. Oh, dating, yeah. But oh, yeah. marriage, marriage. Yeah, that's marriage. why I was like, yeah. Ma- bye. Ma- I got no ties to you, nigga. No, I'm talking about marriage. I'm talking about if I'm married to somebody and I went before the the church and I said for better or for worse, because what if something happens to me and he leaves me? Uh, Me and my friends gonna talk shit about him. He left you because girl, your knee. Yeah, marriage is definitely different. Like, yeah. Wait, wait. First off. If you listen to these ladies, they be on some smooth bullshit. (laughs) If we dating, I'm staying. If we met, ma- no, I'm leaving. If we married, I'm staying. That's different, though. You yeah. can't just divorce someone like that. I'm that's- staying. You mean to tell me when you get married, you stop being superficial? No, nah, I said I'm going to be mad. I'm well, going to say something. You, you fat now. You wasn't fat before. But because we married, I'm staying. But I might cheat? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I'm, I'm staying. I mean, I'm I believe if I got married, he's laying the pipe down. So if 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 it's all like that, then he could just lay down our hand on the business. We'd no, be all right. See. But now, <laughs> but you now know, hey, hey. I'm going to be pissed. But, We're going to work it I'm out, baby. Mad. But you know fat fucks with that dick. I know. It does, yeah. So when the dick start getting interrupted because of the fact, I know y'all cheating. I'm not having sex with him. But you know what? I'm going to have a talk with him. I'm going to say, baby, look, it's a malfunction, and you know how mama is. So we got to figure out what we going to do. (laughs) (laughs) We got to figure out what we going to do about this. We got to get a toy. What we doing? Wow. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like this. If, If I'm married to somebody, he leaves me because I got overweight. Or something happened to me, I would feel some kind of way. So of I can't course. be the opposite of that. Of course. Like that, that's so, you know, I'm married and, to you. But there is a difference between putting yourself in a situation to have poor health knowingly and something happened. If something were to happen, if my man got into a car accident and he's paralyzed, that's not a situation he meant to put himself in. Right. He wasn't trying to but put himself in. But he might get fat. But he might get fat. Well, of course he will. That's no, 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 saying. I'm saying yeah. of course he will. Or he has a health condition and takes the steroids and they prednisone and it makes him blow up. That's a health condition that he didn't ask for. Right. Now, if you are consistently making the choice and we're having this conversation while you're on the road to being there and I'm like, look, Slow you down. know, this is something that we need to start right. looking at. But then, yeah, then that's a conversation that we have. There's, a, right. I think there's a difference between you being okay riding that highway to hell and you getting put there. Why can't you no just person. love me the way I am? <laughs> but, but you, you know wasn't what? like hey, that at first. You I told point me out? At, on wedding night, you told me for better or for worse. But you know what? Wait. I have a cousin. She barely eats as much as I do, and she's big. Yeah. So some people can't help themselves, okay? They can they could diet, they can run, and they still fat. You be right, like, it, might be, it might be genetics. Yeah, it's some people that have sicknesses. Because right. I have a cousin, I swear, she don't eat half as much as I do. I'll eat five times in a day. She eats once, and she's ten times bigger than me. And I said all that to say, sometimes there's conditions that they can't mm-hmm. even help. Like, even in working out, mm-hmm. it just yeah. does not help because it's a genetic Issue. But see, Mimi, you bringing up a point that I agree with. This is why I think yeah. love is so rare, superficiality gets to bloom. Mm-hmm. And people get to walk away based off of certain changes. You're not the same person. I didn't. How many times? I mean, <laughs> this is this era. This is the I didn't sign up for this era. Yeah. Right. Right. Tell me I'm bullshit. Right. This is the I didn't. 
Listen, the fat you, I didn't sign up for fat you. Well, so that part, <laughs> I, would, I just want to point out everything that, you know, was just said about like why we would leave if you got big or whatever or, is fat shaming. Like everything you just said, like, well, that was your choice. You let it get this big. It got on your hand. You're choosing to be unhealthy. That's all of the things that are under fat shaming. Like your fat is your fault. Well, you act like staying in shape is easy. It's not. Like, I tell you, I, I do yoga six days a week. I, I run four to five days a week, and I'm still thick as hell because I want to eat a cheeseburger every once in a while. Like, I got to eat paleo strictly no. to stay really you know, small. You, you just brought up something. Have y'all been following Malaya? <laughs> her, her Instagram? Malaya is thicker than 200 Malaya? Snickers. Mm-hmm. The stripper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right? Uh, the, excuse me. Not the stripper. The exotic dancer. Right. right. That part. <laughs> That's the homegirl. Right. When I tell you, have you seen her workout regimen? Right. Or Ashley Graham. Like, it's not that we're not God healthy. damn. Yeah, also, trying. what I have to say is the other part of this is then people want to get mad when a big person gets small. Because keep in mind, if someone gets big, mm-hmm. the amount of time and attention it takes to get back fit are you willing to lose your husband four, five, six, seven days a week, two, three hours a day to the gym, two, three hours a day to meal prepping? Right. Like you gonna if you want them to get healthy, oh, you gonna sacrifice some things. You gonna have to change how you eat, or they gonna now you gonna yeah. feel criticized about how you eat. Yes. And that's what happened with me. I dropped thirty pounds in six weeks, and my ex gained twenty five because I gave him a choice. I was like, I'm gonna do this thing. You can do it with me, or you can do your own thing. I'm not gonna pressure you into being like me. He's like, oh, I'm gonna do my own thing. Cool. But in the meantime, him and his mama, every meal I make, oh, that looks good. Oh, you lost seven pounds this week. Oh, dang, what are you? And now you you feel a certain kind of way because I'm making progress. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't extend it to you. Or now you feel in shame. I'm not putting shame on you. You can go ahead and eat the fried pork chop while I eat my salmon. Do you, boo-boo. I'm going to eat. Right. I don't, <laughs> like, eat, I don't you know. eat pork, but. No. I do. But, yeah, like, are you willing you to make the like sacrifice? You That's why you <laughs> Are you going to make the sacrifice to take that person <laughs> back pork. from being fat? Because right. losing, losing. <laughs> Even losing 20 pounds is a big, you know, sacrifice for someone right. who has gained something. You know what I mean? Like me, I'm about to lose, start in October, whatever. Like I'll, I'll, I'll be shedding 30 to 40 pounds. Y'all going to see it. Like that ain't just a light sacrifice. Like that, this, the, I'm quitting a job just so I can do it. Like, you know what right. I'm saying? Right. To free up some time in my life. Right. right. I ladies, mean, right. ladies, we have a caller. Let's oh. get the caller on real quick. Caller, you say what? Caller, do you love that fat jelly? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, this is Big A calling from Georgia. Big, how hey. big are you? How much you weigh, man? Just go on and tell us, man. I'm six foot one four hundred. <laughs> Wait, mm-hmm. how much? Six foot what? Six feet. Six foot one four hundred. Six foot one four hundred. You under dig? You not finna push this nigga over. You understand? No. This nigga could stand in the middle of Hurricane Irma and just be right there. Oh my god! <laughs> stop. Holding it down, my nigga. <laughs> Tell me right now. I know you got chicks. Mm-hmm. I know he man, got chicks. About these chicks, bro. <laughs> man, real talk, man. A lot of these skinny girls, man, they are so damn insecure. Mm-hmm. And so when they meet a big dude, and the big dude's gonna fill them with all of the things that they're missing. He's gonna tell them they're beautiful, that they're smart, that they're intelligent. Oh, baby, you look good. And they fall in love with that shit. And next thing you know, they gravitating towards big dudes. And they don't know what to do because society is telling them one thing, but then their heart is telling them another thing. Mm. And so we fuck them up all day. I can't tell you how many girls I fuck their mind up just by giving them compliments. Wow. So all this, I hear hear what y'all saying and it's not all good. But at the end of the day, don't get it twisted. But I will say one thing. Women are funny because... In the summertime, they don't want to fuck with big niggas. But in the wintertime, they want to find one. <laughs> you see what I mean? You underdig? So Amen. Women, women be shaded in a motherfucker. <laughs> Always. Don't ever underestimate the shadeability of a woman. Especially if you shade. cross her. She gonna shade up your whole shit. No, I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. Thank you, man. I appreciate the call. Big dude in the building. Six one four hundred. Oh shit! You under dig? I know there are women out there who love big dudes. Ain't nothing wrong with no big dude to me. No, it's see, nothing wrong not with all. it at all. Not at all. I've heard you say it's not my, say, it's not my preference. He's too big. 
I'm get little. He it's, gonna hurt me. Okay, <laughs> I agree. But for me and what I want, that's not something I want. But it's nothing wrong with that. I have friends that are big, like I like, and they get girls too. So it doesn't matter. It's not like oh, I don't like them as a whole. For me and what I want, not gonna happen. It's, I do agree with what Tiffany was saying, though. It's like if you are gonna be the woman who is gonna have that conversation with your man, like, hey, I, you know, I really want you to work on this, then you do have to be willing to understand the sacrifice that comes with it. If you are not willing to, like, like she said, change your diet, help with the meal plan, like, work out with him, do things together. If you, if you feel like I don't want him taking two hours a day at the gym, well, you know what? On those days where you can work out and go to the gym with him, go with him. Be that encouragement for him. If that's really something that you feel is a big thing i mean i know you know with my parents my parents are married about 40 years you know mm -hmm. my mom was um my mom she's 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 pre-diabetic mm -hmm. and when my dad found that out my dad was like well we need to work on changing our diet now my family is deep south they're new orleans i know you know there you go which gives you an idea about how they cook yeah. right. and they right. eat. Yum. When I tell you, my mom and my dad called me and asked me for recipes to help them put together a, a meal plan mm. because they were going to do it together. Right. My dad doesn't have to change his diet. Neither one of them are overweight, but they're in the gym three times a week together. See. They are working out. They're going to the park and go take walks together. They can mm -hmm. sit down. They can talk. They can go take a walk. They make it a, a, a choice to do it together, you know, because that's my dad's wife. Right. Not, uh, not just the mother of his children. That is his companion for life. He wants to be there with his companion for life as long as he can. Right. Mm -hmm. And if that's what she needs to be healthy, my dad is doing it. My dad, I have never known my dad to cook. My dad is sitting there cooking meals but see, and learning how to support. do stuff. That's, exactly. But that's, that's, but that's my point. If you are going to ask that of your mate, then you need to be supportive. You can't be just sitting there like, well, you need to go eat this air while I eat this steak. You can't right. be that and expect that to have a positive outcome. Well... Uh, I logically I understand what you're saying and I agree up into a point mm -hmm. listen you guys are together but you're individuals too mm -hmm. and I think at some point you know those different paths they go different ways it, mm -hmm. supporting you doesn't necessarily mean doing what you do right 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 of so course. It, it's like yeah I could do what you what you want me to do and that is a form of support. And if I decide to not do what you want me to mm -hmm. do, that doesn't necessarily mean I don't agree with your journey. Right. It just might not be compatible with me. Right. See, a lot of times when we get in relationships, we think every aspect of our lives is supposed to sync up like yep. that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it doesn't work. So I I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying, you know, there's another right answer to that too. Right. And sometimes that right answer is just accepting your partner for who they are as they are mm -hmm. in that moment. Now, I've always said this. People get lessons, people in cup uh, people in relationship, they get lessons or get the understanding of lessons at different times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you might be in a relationship with somebody and see them doing something and it might not resonate with you mm -hmm. right off tops. But then after, you know, maybe a year, maybe two years, maybe three years, depending on when it when that bell rings in their mind, that's what you've been doing. That's the significance of what you've been doing. Sometimes it takes people, you know, a, a while to understand it. What may take my my wife or my my mate or whatever, what may take her six months to get might take me two years. Right. And vice versa. I may get something, boom, right off tops that's going to take her a minute. So a lot of times we get caught up being mad because they don't get it when we get it. Right. And we give up on each other a lot of times. Yeah. In that. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name and where you calling from? You like this that big girl? This is the resident from Indiana. You like them big girls, boy, Ronan? I know you do, boy. <laughs> I know you put uh, on them little gloves, get you, get you some Crisco, <laughs> rub your hands together, start rubbing them down so you can see them shine and glisten. <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> no, I think years ago it was kind of cool until I got injured during, uh, I guess, a uh, late night gymnastics incident. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yes, thrown in. Hey. Late night gymnastics? Hell no. Yeah, yeah she, she was, the thing was like, okay, 
I, I get the whole being conscious of your body and everything. And I'd always get thought I always get that thrown in my face and just like, you know, well, you know, what do you think about my size and all this stuff? And the thing is like if you don't feel a certain way about it, then mm-hmm. you're right. bringing more unnecessary attention to it, and that's what's bothering me. So now I got to deal with these unnecessary issues where you run around in a you know room with a t-shirt on, like I just don't know. And then then you're trying to overcompensate, like doing little skinny girl shit, which I almost broke my knee in half. That's why I kind of chilled out. But <laughs> <laughs> but the thing was like it's other health issues, and the thing is like if you feel some kind of way about it, and I suggest to you. You know, I work with you since we supposed to be together. I work with you on these things and you want to make excuses. Then that's where I got to walk out. Because if you don't want it, but you want to complain about it, Mm -hmm. you want to be a a victim with attention. And I don't like that. Right. I hate that. Wow. Hey, Ronan, as is commonplace, you always come in and drop jewels, man. I can't wait Uh, to see you home, boy. He going to come to the... uh, Hey, though, man, there's all kind of thickness up there in the studio. (laughs) I can't wait to see it, man. Man, (laughs) let me tell you. Let me give you you the thick o meter barometer on what's going on. (laughs) Not the thick. I'm so sad because my mom is going to be here, but we can't come to the studio. Let me just tell you real quick, Ronan. Ronan. (laughs) Me? Me? Mimi, oh, Nick, mm. Mm. Nick, <laughs> oh, and my nigga, for real though, Mimi, uh, the cat suit ow, monkey ow. game <laughs> is wild than a motherfucker, boy. Yeah. You gonna come through here? You gonna see that cat suit monkey game? You gonna be like, oh, <laughs> y'all is monkey. You, you gonna bug out, right? <laughs> then, right. If when you come up here, what's gonna catch you by surprise? Here are the two sleepers. <laughs> see, they beautiful off top. Off hey, top. Smart. But see, you don't know that they are also beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. See, they be, they beautiful off top. You gonna see you're gonna see them, you'll be like, oh shit, that's some pretty little angry smurf <laughs> and if arlene is here arlene mm-hmm. right? off top you're gonna see them you'll be like damn they some pretty girls gosh but then you're gonna Man. see that they are also beautiful on the oh. way out on the, on way the out. curvy side of the on game the way out. Oh, on yeah. the way out like when they walk into the car you're gonna be like oh shit, what the f- <laughs> <laughs> on yes. the beautiful side of the game <laughs> and then you're gonna see <laughs> tiffany <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, yeah. Tiffany, tall. <laughs> yeah. I am tall. Like, I am tall. Yeah. <laughs> On the hippie, hippie, hip side of the game. Oh, yeah. They're, they're out of control. I gained a little weight. These things is 50 inches. This is like out of control right now. Man. <laughs> These are sexy. Sexy. Fine ass. sexy. Stupidly big hips. Tiff with her fine ass. Sexy. <laughs> you gonna come up here? You gonna bug out? That's all I gotta say. You that part. Like, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing the house of cakes. I'm looking forward. He said house of cakes. Zoe's house of cakes. Zoe's house of hot cakes. Zoe's cakes. There it is, man. Hey, I can't wait for you to come through, bro. It's all good. Black Thank black. you for the call. I appreciate it. It's no problem. Ronan in the building. We got another caller. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name? Where you calling from? Speak on it. Darnell, Tuscaloosa. Hey. Tuscaloosa. Let's get deep. He about to go deep. <laughs> Roll tide. Uh, let's make room for Darnell. Darnell, speak on it. Yeah, I can't do the big girls. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did not expect that from you, Darnell. Wait a minute. You, yeah. Wait, Wait. you Wait. set him up to be so deep. He said, yeah, I don't nah, like big girls. It's like mic like, drop right. or no. <laughs> What happened, Darnell? Yeah. Your spiritual ass. Yeah, You're supposed to be I don't feel comfortable getting naked everywhere. I'll be liking to do it on the uh, hotel balcony everywhere. <laughs> like, they don't be feeling good. Then you can't flip them over. Wait, hold, gotta, on, like, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That takes too long. Hold take too on, long. Darnell. <laughs> yeah, you know you crazy to the motherfucker to be trying to do it <laughs> with a big too. girl <laughs> on the balcony. She's scared because she could tip that fucking balcony over. We, we gone. That's what I'm saying. That's a problem. So, I'm trying to stay hard until I get 80. So. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Big woman ain't going to be able to do that. That's, see, here's the problem. You ain't met one that's sexy enough to turn your ass out. Right. 
But there's mm-hmm. some sexy big girls out there that'll put that hot pocket on your ass. Yeah. <laughs> you be speaking in tongues, my yeah, yeah, only, yeah, yeah. I don't doubt it. Like in the bedroom, of course. But I'm talking about like everywhere else. Like I'm a surfer. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like to go on the beach everywhere. Mm. You know what I'm so you mean to tell me you can, be feeling comfortable if, you, if you can't pick the girl up? You know what I'm saying? Is you telling me if you and can't pick I, the girl up, it's not a good, it's not a go? No, then it's it's more to it than that too. Then like when we go places. Like, they see other chicks with curvy chicks, with, you know, that eye. They be giving me that eye, and then they be having a problem with that. You get what I'm saying? No, I get it, but that's, like, that oh, speaks to down them. On that speaks to the maturity you know level of the person. I don't like them. It's like I ain't sure they don't like they self. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? I don't know Darnell. Like they There's a lot of skinny women like that who are insecure. Who exactly. They see a girl, look at their man, and they like, oh, who is she? I mean, I see somebody look at man, my man. I'm like, hey, look at him because he cute. You should be looking at him. Exactly. I don't Darnell. care. That'll have nothing to do with me. Right. Darnell, let me ask you this, bro. Mm-hmm. Okay. How tall are you and how much do you weigh? Right. Yeah. Um, like six feet, 185. Hmm. That's about average. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's about average. What'd you say? He lying? Oh. <laughs> he said he's surf. I believe him if he's six well, foot, he 185. Said, um, like, why you- well, first off, he's from Tuscaloosa. Where is he surfing? Sure, well, I was asking the same question in my head. Like, That's where are you surfing step. at? No, so I was thinking the same thing. Like, <laughs> they said niggas surf. <laughs> <laughs> Those niggas don't be fucking with sharks and surfing and shit. Man, I love water, but I don't fuck with sharks for real. Like, man. Oh, darn it. But I will, okay, so his thing, okay, so I used to be superficial in the fact that I was like, I'm a big girl. And so I used to like really be only like, I preferred athletic build as in like, Six, like six foot or taller, 185 or bigger, because I used to have this thing where I was like, I need to believe you can pick me up because I, you know, I rumble in the bedroom too. So I'm like, rumble. I need to feel secure. <laughs> I need to be feel secure that you can, you know, handle certain are situations. You, are you having sex or fighting, nigga? Right. Right. Man, I mean, depending on what the day is, it might oh, be hard to tell. Oh, no. But, uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Might be hard to tell. But uh, <laughs> anyway. Things will happen. But then, uh, yeah, like, once I had kind of, like, made that clear to a few, like, skinny dudes that were trying to approach me, like, they just made a mission. They're like, what makes you think a skinny dude ain't strong? And then, ooh, I should, dang, I should have shut my mouth right there. Like, they just, they just put a whole hamper on all of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, right. what do you mean I can't lift you up? I was like, oh, didn't know I pose a challenge to the world. Okay. So, all right, man. So I would say, like, like you know, like, Angry Smurf keeps uh, saying, like, it's her preference or her preference. I, <laughs> I challenge people who say it's their preference, but they've never actually tried the thing they're saying they don't prefer. So, like, so I, I really used to really not, like, prefer skinny dudes and then a few no skinny way. dudes just laid that pipe and I was like well <laughs> well right. that might not I be mean, like my day to day preference but I ain't gonna turn it down somebody well, somebody in the a- chat room said Darnell is channel surfing <laughs> <laughs> they said he was swag surfing <laughs> yeah I mean I've dated somebody with a gut and that was a lot for me like still, that was a personal accomplishment or like a no. lot like you didn't like it. Well, first, no, let, I let didn't like it this. because how mm-hmm. you, no, let I me don't. Just ask you, let me just ask you this straight up. She's like just straight up. <laughs> it was hard. It was this like is sexual from me okay, to you. On. Let me just I need to know this. Just tell the truth. Are you just a superficial girl? Are you shallow? You're shallow how, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, no. I will say that the reason why I'm not You're not going gonna to tell the truth. Okay, th- I'm gonna explain myself because <laughs> you don't have to explain. Just no, yes or no. Are you shallow? In t- in yes some ways, no. yes, but there's it's not about like okay, cool. So the the <laughs> first the, the first two men that were my boyfriends, I was not actually attracted to them like in the face or anything. And it wasn't like, you know what I mean? So In the face. Well, because their bodies was okay. They were like skinny or whatever. Not skinny, but you know, they were like normal, but it like it wasn't about like looks it was us being friends and that's what it was that made me date them with their personalities but as far as like now i'm starting to be more i feel like i wanted to be a little more shallow in the sense that i really want to be attracted to the guy that i want to be with because like physically because i feel like that helps just the dynamic of me and how i treat them because sometimes i feel like i can get madder it's easier to get madder at someone when you don't look at (laughs) 
I don't know. It's like the no, how I it's am. So it's, it's not. It's not necessarily shallow to want to be attracted to the you're person ugly, that you're. I'm mad at you. You want to no. be with, but it's just like you know we're how just saying Duke, what you're attracted would, to. But like when shallow. he would try to be like, oh, da, 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 I'm like nigga, get my face. Like I wasn't like you're not even cute. Like you already <laughs> pissed me off, and you're not cute. So like it was wow. hard to like you know what I mean. Like romance, like all the romance and stuff like that. It was a lot harder. And like. <laughs> I just realized it. A nigga like, gotta be cute in order no, for you to get romantic. I'm not, no, I'm not saying that because obviously <laughs> I was with them for years. But I'm just saying, like, just moving forward. I love like, love I don't know. Her. I just kind of was like, I don't want to just be like, oh, we were friends and like let's date. Like, I kind of want to be courted because that's the issue I've had before. Like, I never. It was always kind of like, oh, we just ended up in a relationship because we were friends. It wasn't like I was pursued, and it wasn't like mm-hmm. a, let's take you out. So there was no like flirting and things of that nature so that's kind of where i'm coming from where i'm like i want to be a little more shallow now moving forward in like my dating world you think that's gonna be better i mean i'm gonna try it i I tried to date people i wasn't attracted to and own their personalities and they still treated me like shit so it doesn't matter let us know how that goes (laughs) all i'm saying is my husband is definitely like he's not the sick you know the six-pack kind of guy He's like, he probably got a six pack under there, but it's like kept nice and warm by like all the other stuff that's on top of it, so you know? <laughs> but I mean, let me tell you something. I think my husband is the finest thing. And guess what? He is rocking the dad by. We joke about it all the time. I think my husband is sex on a stick. See, that's okay? how you gotta be, my though. Husband, my husband does not look like these LA model guy types. I didn't want those LA model guy types. I wanted my man. And my man is rocking that dead body. And he is sexy as hell to me. I'm sorry. Like, I, that's right. If you, that's you know, what I'm saying. If it has got to be what you're attracted to. Exactly. Like, I, shoot, let me tell you something. So listen. Let uh, me tell you, when I see my man, I'll be like, hey, boo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'll go home and be like, hey. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you <laughs> I, I develop all of these questions for the topic, right? Mm-hmm. And of course, I'm posting them on Facebook. I'm posting posting them on YouTube. I'm posting them on Twitter. One of the questions is: Is BBW sex bomb? My homeboy Chris, who used to who used to uh, you know be the engineer and produce for this show, he says it's warm in here, cuz. <laughs> Hilarious! <laughs> Your shit might melt at first insertion if you're not prepared. <laughs> oh shoot! Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Oh, well, sure. damn. Okay, okay. So I've been waiting for, to kind of mention this. So in regards to different body sizes. So now I'm like, okay, I've I finally like experienced like a good range of body types because for a while, like I was a little shallow and like I had just been with a like little. one kind of body type. Except my husband was an exception. Like he had beyond a dad bod. Like he. He took hydroxy cut for men for three years and still wanted to eat cheeseburgers. Like the dissonance was real, but I was like, "Do you, boo boo?" I still like you said. Like he was my dark, he was my dark chocolate drop. Like no one could tell me different. Like mm, delicious. Said hard hydroxy <laughs> you know? cut. Right? But before him, but before him, <laughs> no, he really did hydroxy cut for men for three years. I'm like, I don't know what you're doing. Like why are you gonna take that and eat cheeseburgers? I don't know. Gosh. But do you, boo boo? Um, <laughs> like you still laid the pipe. I love you. Okay. Right. So, um, but before him, like it was like definitely just a ton of football players, like types, like just, that was what it was. Um, but like now, you know, like (laughs) I've experienced some other types of men. And (laughs) what I will say is physically for me, especially as a thicker woman, my experience and mind you, I'm super flexible. Like I do yoga every day. Like, okay. But physically speaking, there's a certain size man that is easier to ride. Like there's certain positions that are easier depending on if you're small or big. Go and deeper. if you have <laughs> go deeper. <laughs> right. So like me being on top of a small dude being a thicker girl, like that means basically I have to do the splits to ride you. Like me physically have to get down Yummy. closer to the bed or the floor or the couch <laughs> or whatever. I have to spread my legs wider because you're smaller do that whereas if you're a bigger dude i don't have to get as low right like so the amount of friction like there's certain things you can do with skinny girls and skinny dudes that you can't do and vice versa or you can just get up on your feet right and bounce (laughs) that too (laughs) (laughs) don't have skills just bounce but no but i'm just saying coach you it just no no, no. (laughs) one person who doesn't need to be coached is me but i take directions i do take directions but my whole point is (laughs) my, my point is on both sides of the game like there's definitely certain positions 
like that are easier easier to get in if you're smaller or bigger. There's a certain amount of pressure. That's why like is it bigger with BBWs? There's a little more pressure on your body when someone's bigger than you. Yeah. Right? Like when they sex feels different if you're 250 pounds uh pressed against me versus 165 pounds uh pressing against me. There's you know what I'm saying? So like depending on what your preference is or if you like certain, you know, positions or certain ways to ride, like certain people can but do certain things. But what if he's skinny with that billy club? Oh, with I know. That strap. Yeah. <laughs> You don't need all that no, body. I didn't that, say you need it. I'm just saying it's different. So that you know, javelin you know? gonna pierce right through. Really, it's just an argument for polyamorousness. <laughs> like if sometimes you want it thick and sometimes you want it skinny, like maybe just get you some variety. Because yeah. that's what I'm saying. I'm not yeah. against it. Like I know when I ride this size dude versus when I ride this size size dude, it's gonna feel different because of that. Like certain things feel different just because of size or rhythm or whatever. So just owning that. Yeah. Like we said, like. Big dudes based on like back problems or knee problems or whatever. Some of them, some of them can throw you up. You know, like athletes, they might be a big ass dude, but he gonna throw you in the air. Like hey, versus maybe a non athletic big dude, he he can't stand up and throw let you down. Let me ask all of you. <laughs> let me ask all of you. Skinny or big? Do men have to have the ability to pick you up? Do women like to be picked up? Yep. Yep. <laughs> I, I like to be picked up and pushed against the wall. Oh exactly. shit! Here we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Big juicy. It's gotta be an adventure. Let's have an adventure. Not the, it's not that I need you to carry me around, but my thing is you have to. I have That's to feel. Fun. I need to trust you enough that you have enough physical that I trust you physically that you can transition. Uh, no, no, no. It's about transitions. If I don't trust you physically that you can't throw this leg where you want it or shit flip around, this shit God right. Damn it. Like I'm gonna kick you, or we gonna we gonna have an accident. <laughs> so if you're not physically in shape to pull off some of the transitions or moves, we're like, just not gonna do this, right? right. Like you, if right. if you've ever fucked me and got kicked in the head, it's your fault. We like you didn't, you didn't execute the transition properly, like, <laughs> right? Because like, right. I'm bendy as fuck. I say I'm Gumby. Like if you want the leg there, put it there. Like, but you gotta have the ability to just know you want it there. Put it there. Shit. You <laughs> might as well. <laughs> This is this is wild right now. <laughs> the last week's show was wild too. Jesus, right. <laughs> this shit is crazy. Women like to get picked up. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna end mine. <laughs> uh. I've been playing in basketball for years. Oh god, you know, my lower back is not in the position the way it's set up right now to be picking people up. <laughs> <laughs> or just beat it up. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but you can transition. You right, can transition. Right. Oh, but I could damn show transition. <laughs> Shit, as long as you got the transmission, that's all that matters. <laughs> Somebody, Ronan Martin needs to stop. He called it the meatloaf press. Oh, <laughs> Being no, in the gosh. big girl, big girls. <laughs> the meatloaf press. Whoa. This dude is out of control, man. He ain't got no goddamn sense. <laughs> Who is this? He just called in here. Oh. Gosh. <laughs> Let me just say this. I think big girls are beautiful too. I do too. Oh, yeah. And there are some really gorgeous big girls yes. around this motherfucker. Yes. Like, when I say gorgeous, I mean like stunningly beautiful. Mm-hmm. I showed y'all that one girl, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is my home girl. Her name is Natalie. Go on, Natalie. Go I remember on, girl. Natalie. Natalie, she's a poet. I remember. Are anybody hip to the uh, the poetry lounge Mm-mm. on yes. uh, Fairfax? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Cause she doing her thing. Like years ago, I went there, and and, and I mean years ago. And she was really young. She was like early 20s, 22, 23, something like that, years ago. And she made a beeline for me. (laughs) And I, you know, I looked at her and I was, I was taken aback. Mm -hmm. It's like a little, a big, really big, uh, uh, I was fucked up because I never seen. It was a really big, thick girl. You were like, damn. She was really big, but really pretty. Pretty. I ain't never seen one that pretty. She was like a a doe, like a little, a, but a bigger deer. Oh my goodness. Not like a little deer, but a bigger deer. Mm-hmm. But real beautiful. Right. And I didn't know how to process. I was like, fuck, wow, 
shit. Mm-hmm. But I thought she was amazing. Mm-hmm. Smart, intelligent, could hold a conversation, articulate, all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the time, I was with somebody. All right? But she was... <laughs> and he was faithful. That's what I'm talking about. Man, I'm no, what's crazy <laughs> is... No, what's crazy is me and my homeboy, his name is Setu. Mm-hmm. I call him a guinea man because he's half African. You know, African niggas don't have no filter. They be talking to your woman. I had to tell Setu, like, hey, nigga, that's my girl. Don't make me smack you, nigga. <laughs> oh, 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 my bad. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't see. Okay, nigga, you can see. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. No, but seriously, Setu and I would go down to the poetry lounge. What is it, Tuesday nights? Every Tuesday night just to see just the plethora of baddest. Just badness is in that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. But she was there. And, you know, I went there at the time. Like I said, I was with somebody. She came to me and was like, not her. Ah, dang. And I thought it was hate, but it wasn't. Mm-mm. She was like, for real, mm-hmm. not your level. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, and see, that's one thing that amazes me about women. Regardless of their size, y'all all got intuition. Y'all all got certain gifts and powers. Listen, after me and that girl broke up a few years later, I went back to the poetry lounge to look for Natalie. And I was like, Natalie, what the fuck did you see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how come I couldn't see it? And you pointed it out, but I didn't know what you were pointing to. Mm -hmm. It was some shit I just ignored. Mm -hmm. But when I tell you, though, look at at that pretty girl. Look at that mouth. What that mouth do, little thicky? I'm sorry. Little thicky, what that mouth do? I'm sorry. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Don't underestimate these thick girls out here, man. They can love you up. They can feed you up. They can warm you up. Sure. Look at Usher. Supposedly. Usher. Allegedly. Usher. Did he? I think Usher came out and said he was with that nigga. Yeah, he, yeah, he claimed it. He said he hit I mean, that. Go ahead, Usher. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, Own he hit that. Own it. Own it. They had know. a video. He couldn't lie. Oh, right? damn. Usher out here talking about it. Yeah, I took that big thing down. Right. Damn. And picked her out the crowd at the cl- at the concert. I mean, whoa. <laughs> the options. And couch humped her. Right. No I mean, sometimes that's just the place. I'm just saying, like. That is not the only option. There's so many other other options. No, I think I think people have fetishes, and they've done Mm -hmm. this, and they've done that, and they've done this, so they want to try that. He's like, I had enough baddies. (laughs) Let me try this other flavor. Hey, flavor like me. I was like, okay, skinny dude, fuck you, what's popping? Right, this dude Ronan. Ronan, the bed smells like Egyptian musk oil and Uh. top ramen noodle water. (laughs) He's so rude, rude Ronan, rude. (laughs) Okay, that's enough. Like yeah. chili cheese dogs <laughs> oh, <laughs> with onions. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Oh, no. Listen, <laughs> but let me say this. Even if big girls smelled like food, do you girl. know how comforting it is? <laughs> when I yeah. walk in a house and you smell a pot of spaghetti banging. <laughs> Hell yeah. Or some lasagna or some shit. Hell yeah. Or some kind of pot roast. That shit make you feel good. Hell if yeah. your woman smelled like that. <laughs> Nigga, it's cuddle time, my nigga. <laughs> Netflix and chill for real. You sitting in the bed smelling like a pot roast. Right. <laughs> nice and tender and juicy. <laughs> it's on and cracking, my nigga. All right. We're done. All right. We're done. This was a great show. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I loved it. Don't hate on the big love. Big love is out there. You should participate. Damn, I had a girl who got big. Oh, let me, let me stop. I still like her. All right, uh, <laughs> right, exactly. You know what? Pork chops and chill. Pork hmm. chops and chill. I don't eat pork. Right. Hog mogs and chill. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Great show tonight. Somebody right. said Pringles and chill. Chitlins and chill. You know. Belly Fried talk forty five. Okay, it's getting out I'll of control. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even like chitlins. I'm just talking mm, shit. I hate chitlins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We love it. We're going to have this show edited and posted again so you can hear the audio the whole nine yards. Thank you guys for participating. <laughs> the Voice of Reason. Tonight's topic was great. Are you a shallow how? Most of us are. Shit. I loved it, but we'll see you guys. 
what? Wednesday with another heater topic. Thank you so much. I'm going to holler at y'all. Deuces.